Hello, what is going on guys? Munchables here and I'm starting a new video series. As you can see, I'm going to start watching some solo queue games. I'm going to start trying to hone my champion knowledge and my matchup knowledge uh, by watching the pros play. So today we're going to be looking at Taeyun from KDF. Now, if you've been watching the LCK at all, you know that this guy has been subbed out recently. He played the first two series of the split for KDF. Uh, not the greatest series, uh, four game losses straight in a row, and then he's been subbed out for Bull, who has been making some moves in the LCK. Uh, and Taeyun has taken that personally, currently in the top 10 in Korean solo queue. And today we're going to take a look at his Ezreal. And uh, it's kind of a bonus on top of this one as well, in that, you know, he's got a rumble support alongside him. He's up against uh, a, a Korean... Samira Maokai lane, which is always going to be a tough lane to go up against, but we'll see how he manages with a, an unconventional support like this, if it's going to work out for him, and, and how he takes control of the game. And we'll be looking at what he builds as well, because it's quite an interesting Ezreal build that he goes for um, later on, as he goes for kind of the, the Spear of Shojin build that we've seen, like Han Q and players like this going in solo Q, you get the extra ability damage, so you, you get the CDR. But then he ends up going for the Voltaic as well. And we'll see the damage that he's able to do off the back of those abilities later on into the game as well. But so far, just using the range advantage that they have with a Rumble and an Ezreal. They were in lane first because they didn't have to go for a leash. So being able to just slowly but surely push this wave in, they'll be able to crash the third wave. He didn't start with a tier. He started with a Doran's Blade. So we'll see. Diego's in the bottom quarter of the jungle. He's going for an invade right now, so you don't expect a cheater recall to come through here from Taeyun. You expect him to just keep pressuring, try and go for plates here, make sure he's available to support just in case the brand is somewhere to be seen. And there we go. Brand just showing up in the jungle. Rumble already moving over. That's a plate taken in under three minutes. A plate taken by Taeyun. So great little start to the game. He's moving up to try and save his Viego. Great E. Massive distance on that one. One for one so far. And unfortunately, Samira getting that first kill. Closing the gap as well. This is a bad fight right now as Rumble burning down. Does get some damage out. Taeyun, he could clean up here if he could finish the first kill. Okay, nice Q. Gets the second one. E cooldown isn't there. But even still, double kill for him. Gets ahead of the Samira. Got the double buffs and crashed a huge wave. You can take a look at the minions in the bottom side. This is going to push towards him as well. So Taeyun, great start to the game. And again, not going for the cheat recall. Saw the invade happening there to help out his jungler, who uh, is in the mid lane position for some reason. But great little start there. And it does mean straight off the back, <laughs> I mean, this is an insane start for Ezra, right? Sheen and a tier on first recall is kind of off the chain. But it's a serrated Dirk as well the Samira, so you do have to be careful. Luckily, XP advantage already gained. I say luckily. Skillfully. XP advantage gained off the back of the, the wave crashing under the tower during the play in the jungle. It's going to be a huge advantage here for Taeyun. And we'll see how aggressive he plays into a lane like this, because if he gets caught out by the Samira and the Maokai, he's really going to be in a lot of trouble. It's going to be a difficult fight to maneuver, because the second you get knocked up, uh, I think he was looking somewhere else <laughs> for that minion. As soon as you get knocked up, though, Samira will chain it. Ignite's still available on the, on the red side there. Although he does have cleanse, so he should be okay for that. And the level 6 spike lessened by that cleanse as well. He can tank the roots for him and Rumble, cleanse it, and get away. But so far, look at the CS difference. Over double the CS, and it's not even a big stacks wave right now. Samira falling really far behind. Obviously, Samira can do a lot with not a lot of gold if you can get a big ultimate off. But I don't think there's going to be much of an opportunity in this laning phase. Don't currently know where Brand is. Viego's on the bottom side of the map. Whether or not he finds any chance, he's making a play towards the mid laners. So <laughs> we've got a solo kill up top. This is a great start to the game, honestly, for Taeyun. A reasonable amount of gold on both teams. It's a thousand lead, though, at five minutes. It's a great little start. But the question is not, like, can you get a big lead? This is solo queue at the end of the day. There's always going to be big leads exploding. The question is what he does with it, how he uses this Ezreal to snowball, because I, I feel like there's a there's a mentality in Western solo queue that Ezreal is a weak early champion. 
He's going to prove us wrong here. Brand's moving in. This is 2v3 right now. They've got underneath the tower as well. Taeyun's in big trouble. Good stun, but the cleanse. That's big damage coming in. The burn is there. One more auto, but he survives. And now might be able to turn it around, but Shen comes in as well. It's an absolute party. Bot lane tries to turn it onto the Samira, but unfortunately can't get the kill. But hey, even just taking down the brand there is a bit of a bonus, considering that was 4v2. Diego trying to move in to get an invade. He's managed to get, I'm assuming, the, th the three grubs while that was all going on. I don't know how you check on the interface. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're up at the top. Yeah, so we, we got the three grubs, and we traded. At least we got one kill, and the wave was stacked against them, so nothing too much lost, aside from, obviously, the kill. No opportunity to get plates or anything like that. So still have the XP lead at the bottom side. And I'll tell you, see what he can do to... To regain control. You should still be ahead in gold. You can see on the scoreboard. Getting close to the ghost blade there for Samira. But equally we're getting fairly close to the essence reaver as well. We're just going to really slowly push this wave in. Try and deny as many CS as possible. And potentially set up for a movement around the map. You can set up for a dive with this if Diego is keen. Especially... If we're about to hit level 6, Rumble Ultimate, incredibly good for dives. Nice opportunity to get the E in for the W proc damage there. Maokai was just out of range. Playing with fire a little bit with Maokai in the area, but very nicely done. And again, using those three grubs, that's the second plate already. And that's a really good little tip you just saw. Is when he goes for an auto on the tower, Q's at the same time. And that way... It's harder to see. It's harder to dodge. And also queuing when they're going for a last hit so they stand still. Get that chance for the free harassment. That's what makes Ezreal a strong laner. I was talking about that kind of Western mentality of Ezreal being weak in the early game. He is if you're not landing your Qs. But the second you're landing your Qs, Ezreal is insanely strong early on in the game. You essentially have extra auto attacks. They're even slightly stronger. So just getting this harassed down. Brand is up top right now, so they know that they're totally safe to just keep wailing away. Ultimate flies out. Doesn't quite find out. I'm going to try and do a bit of manual camera work. I'm doing this off of a replay off OPGG, so be able to see what he's up to here. Maokai gets away. Viego can't quite finish the kill. But immediately, Taeyun just moves back to the lane, and again, denying this CS. Look at this CS lead in this bottom side here. 30 in his favor, denying a cannon here and a couple more minions alongside. And in fact, this CS lead is currently growing with the way it's going. And the fact that we've seen so much fighting this game so far, I feel like really benefits the fact that we have a rumble support. Very, very aggressive support. Doesn't stick around to crash the wave, actually. It's going to let the last couple of minions finish themselves off. Wants to get the tem tempo recall. And this wave will just be denied from the Samira Maokai arriving at the last second. But again, look at this CS lead 30 now in his favor. He'll move back to lane. As we take a look at the top side, the solo lane is are actually doing really well for us this game, which is very nice. Good little ult from the Azir. Flash forced. Yone doing some work as well. He's trying to finish off this Gnar, but he doesn't quite have the damage. Oh, and the stun as well. It's really tough. As uh, AD trying to get more. Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm not a good observer. This is a disaster. Okay. Disaster in the top side. At least Azir managed to get one. That's Lucid as well. Lucid doing a good job. Oh, we're back to the bottom lane. We're focused on the Israel here today. And look at that damage onto the Samira. Absolutely huge. Essence Reaver now finished off. True Shot Barrage blasted out just to make sure Samira has reset. And that's going to guarantee first tower. So this is the point where decisions start being made by Taeyun. Where's he going to go on the map? He's got a huge gold lead. Almost 10 CS per minute at the 10 minute mark. And that's with all of the action that's been going off this game. Essence Reaver finished. In fact, he's just going to go straight away for a recall. While he's heading back to base. We can take a look at what Rumble's up to. Because he's managed to find... I don't know if this is Morgan... Is in the top lane of Morgan. 
found Sombon. Luce hit a huge lead in the mid lane, although he's not ahead in CS, has managed to find those three kills from the skirmishes. But now, we've been to the shop, we've got ourselves another Warhammer, got ourselves some boots. And he's moving back out onto the map. I'll put the runes up at the start of the video, by the way, if you want to see the runes, this kind of thing. I might put the final build up as well, so we can see what's going on there. Diego could be in trouble. Diego's having a bit of a hard time recently. Oh, nearly gets it, and there's Nar to finish the job. Nicely done. At least set up for the team. That's going to be all six grubs. That's fantastic news for Tayun. Tayun has actually just moved straight back down to the bottom lane. I'm kind of surprised to see this. I thought he'd be swapping up to the mid lane, try and get more plates, try and punish the Yone. But looks like quite happy to stay solo. I suppose you're on the Ezreal. You're very safe on a solo lane. He's a little bit nervous to push up any further than he is. And rightly so. Oh, no. He's being ganked here. This is bad news. Let's see what he can do. He's over. And flashes over to his teammates. And now the rest of the team's here. It's a good ult from Yone. The Pillar of Flame is enough to finish the kill. So caught out a little bit. And that's kind of what we were talking about. The, the weakness of solo laning, solo laning as an AD carry. Tried to move over to his team. But caught out. Great little flank there from Morgan as well. I'm not entirely sure how he managed to get into the jungle. I have to assume it was through this choke here. Maybe came through the mid lane down and then back around. But either way, found his opportunity. Brand's got Viego. Viego. Not having the greatest game of his life. Having a tough time. But luckily for him, he's got Lucid and he's got Taeyun. And it looks like they're primed to carry. But it's a much more even game. And I was thinking it was going to be, to be honest. We had a 1,000 gold lead at, what was it, three minutes? Now we're pretty much at the same gold lead. And at this point, Taeyun has swapped to the mid lane. I think realizing this is a lot safer. But I'm sure he knew that already. He is a professional player after all. And he's just going to look to continue to punish the Samira. And this is the thing. When you're playing against things like Samira, things like Draven... Things like Callista, these champions that have massive early damage, if they fall behind, they're really weak. Great ultimate onto two. Oh my god, he could triple kill this if he can get onto the Maokai as well. I don't think there's a chance. Huge ultimate, nearly killed the Samira and the Maokai. Preemptive W to get it on cooldown. Moves in now. He's actually looking for the dive. The Shen ultimate is there. Taeyun caught there. Good stun. Comes out from the brand. Shen ultimate denied just, I think, just by the kill here. <laughs> Doesn't matter. This Nar is smashing Shen in the top side. This, yes, lead for him as well. More plates. It's a huge, huge early game coming out from uh, Taeyun's team. So, we finished our Essence Ruby. We finished our Muramana. Again, Viego dies, but hey, he got the objective. I feel like that's the theme with this Viego so far. He dies, but he gets the objective first. He got all six grubs. He died for them, but he got all six grubs. He's got two drakes. He's died for them, but he's got his drakes. Now let's see what Tayun's going to do on his two item spike. You don't. The problem with Ezreal sometimes is at this point, you know, very early on the two items. Oh, we're just going to all in this. This is an easy kill. Nicely done. Great equalizer to set that one up. Samira, you can see, getting pretty frustrated at this point. Needs a bit of setup. Samira on her own, often going to struggle to find too much kill threat unless you really miss position and step too far forwards. But you can see, until you get the, the uh, tier stacks, you do feel a little lull. Doesn't feel like as impactful of a purchase finishing the uh, Mana Moon until it's stacked up. You get that Muramana, it's a massive spike. But often the Muramana can coincide with your third item. And that, that is a spike and a half right there. That feels good. He probably does have enough gold for boots right now. If he wants to go back. Yeah, 1,000 gold. So could go for his CDR boots. But obviously, he doesn't have the opportunity with the wave here. But I feel like the game's sort of slowing down a little bit. Although Morgan looking for a flank on the bottom side again. Sane's just pushing the waves. I feel like Morgan is a little bit scared. 
who wanted to go for the play. You could see it on the minimap. He showed up down bottom, but Lucid is so strong. He's only got one item. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for the 2v1 play, but perhaps didn't spot him. And again, we're just sieging away. Very few meaningful fights in terms of, like, big skirmishes, aside from at whatever level it was, level 3, I think. It's generally speaking been very small fights. Good dodge on the stun. Gets out to safety. Get rid of the scoreboard so we can see this one. Now on to Morgan. Just gets to free fire for a bit. Cleanse. Not available. Oh, great little dash forwards to get the cube. Beautifully played by Teyuna. This wave has an opportunity on the tower once again. Four players dead. Six grubs to work with. That's a tier two taken. He's looking for all of the jungle camps as well. Won't be able to find him right now. But we'll be able to get himself the tower. And this is where uh, the build is going to get kind of interesting. It's going to go for that reset. 3,000 gold to work with. And there we go. Voltaic Cyclo Sword picked up. Bit of lethality in there. But also, it stacks your uh, Energize a little bit faster. And it's dashes and stealth. Now, I don't know... If his True Shot Barrage, uh, sorry, if his Essence Flux counts as a dash, I'm going to try and keep an eye on this little charge stack. Whether it's just the lethality he's going for. So there's an Energize. I'm not going to see it, unfortunately, for now. Dash forward, but I think he's already on 100 there. So, Energize stack used. He's not going to E forwards, though, with Maokai there. And not tanky enough at this point in the game. Morgan's going for him. And I mean, easiest team fight of his life, honestly. And now it's the chasing game. Brand too low. Shen is a little bit tanky, but I don't think he's tanky enough. There's the dash forwards. Misses the Q. He's being chased by Yone, actually, at this point. True shot. This is the Shen. He's now in an awkward spot. Oh, great little E, though. I think he just out-damages the Yone. Gets over the wall. That's his flash used. Cleanse still available. Oh, great little E. Keeps himself safe. Beautifully done. Apologies for the terrible camera work, guys. I promise I'll get better at that over time. That got a little bit dangerous, but some great mechanics to E upwards. I don't think Yone was ready for that one. Managing to outplay it. Flash over the wall. Get himself to safety. Everyone's TP into the top side right now. I think Nah is in a lot of trouble. Morgan's here. Chen is there as well. They don't have a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, they do. Friends arrived. They've got damage. See you later, Nah. So, Drake will be the answer. And Lucid died as well, actually. I missed that. There's a reason I'm not a professional observer. So he's got his Voltaic. I want to see him use his E. I want to see if it stacks it. I I have to assume it does. Why else would you build it? We're at 100. There we go. It's used. E forwards. I don't understand why the auto follow is he's so far up the screen. We've got all of this dead space behind him. Backing off. We're flanked by Yone. We're jumping straight onto Yone. Oh my lord. Some of the worst camera work you've ever seen. We'll have to figure something out as a solution. True shot barrage. Oh, gorgeous. Apologies for the camera work. We'll figure out a way in the future. I might just stop doing the manual camera. When I get rid of the scoreboard, it hovers on him a little bit better. So for team fights, I'll try and get rid of the scoreboard more. Saying, I mean, these team fights have been too easy for him. He's pretty much 1v1ing the Yone. No fear of just taking that fight. Knows he's ahead. Knows he has the damage. Morgan trying to contest here. Oh, great ult there. From Lucid. Gifted kills on a silver platter. Are you trying to escape? Two shot barrage doesn't doesn't find it. Oh, 
Okay. 20 minutes on the clock, and we've got... What is that? 9,000 gold lead. And at this point, I'm guessing... Yep, there we go. Spirit Shojin picked up as well. So it goes for the Voltaic before the Spirit Shojin. So obviously, Spirit Shojin, if you don't know, gives you, at the bottom there, you see, 6 seconds up to 4. Uh, Grant stacks for 6 seconds up to 4. 2% increased damage for each stack. It's 1.5%, I think, for ranged, unless they changed it. But either way, you do build yourself up bonus ability damage, but it's percentage. So the more items you have when you get the Shojin, the more effective it is. True shot. So close. Viego goes over. We're going to follow. Easy team fight with Nas slamming everyone into the wall. Equalizer under everyone, too. It's beautiful. Really interesting build. Massive damage coming out from him during these fights. I mean, even the Yone is afraid to 1v1 him at this point. Look at that. Dodges away with the E. Nearly gets the kill onto Fenrir. And that's going to be game. Beautifully done by Teyun. He's fighting for his spot on the main team here. Wants to get it back off a ball. And right now, topping the tables when it comes to 80 carries on the Korean ladder. Had Lunar New Year. And he's taken that as an opportunity to practice. Going straight on to Morgan. He's got one kill here. Could be in trouble. Samira closes the gap. And will actually finish him off. Oh no, they've trolled. They've trolled themselves. That was his chance to end. He wanted to find kills instead. The Nexus. I mean, look at it. What is that? 700 HP. It was. I mean, it regens fast as well. So it was probably 500. Tayun. Getting a little uh getting a little ahead of himself on this one. Not gonna be too much of an issue. Drake coming up though in a minute and a half. That'd be solved for them if they uh if they even need that. I think they'll probably just walk this one in once Tayun respawns. Lucid having a fantastic game as well. And he's headed towards Frozen Heart for his final item. Just a bit of tankiness. I mean, look at the enemy team. Aside from brand, it's exclusively physical damage. Well, aside from Brandon or Maokai, but let's be honest, we're not particularly afraid of Maokai. So he's going to be quite happy denying those auto attacks. As you saw there, we have got to the point on this mirror where if you miss position, you are still going to get one shot. Yone's on a flank right now. Get rid of the scoreboard. See how this one pans out. As he moves forward, Yone's been scared off to the bottom lane. Supers are pushing into the base as well. The Nexus is open right now, so red team missed positions for a second. We can go in on this one. Two shot barrage straight off the bat. Goes slightly wider the brand. We're just going to look for the Shen. No, we're going to move further into the fight. Yone chasing us out of this one. Lucid with... Oh, I see. <laughs> Who needs to win the team fight? We're just distracting. Nar's got the game. Fantastic stuff. Taeyun on top of his form right now. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.